Just another day in this beautiful faux European town. I feel like this is the kind of place where, if it were Disney, people would be breaking out into song about books. Just, you know, former child soldier. <laughs> Living life in the big city. Having feelings. And, and a job. Tell me about it. <laughs> Every college student in the world. Oof. So it's one of them, them old-timey schools. She looks like the kind of lady that will wrap your knuckles with a ruler. And no fun will be had here. You're fired or expelled or whatever. Man, teachers and their attendance policies. Goodbye. <laughs> that's it. You should have said that before I enrolled. Then why am I here? Oh, that's right. I forgot. It's so that you can teach me how to be a responsible adult and impose your your, <laughs> your societal values on me. <laughs> Starting with attendance policies, because that's the secret to education. The school cynicism continues and intensifies. <laughs> but you'll still have to pay it all back. <laughs> And you can't default. There's an opening for this show? Wait, what? I had to like give it up on that completely. Violet Evergarden. See, I learned how to read this strange and bizarre <laughs> writing language. It would be a bold choice to just have an opening where she's standing in this field the whole time. It's just her face. This is giving me some... Fruit Basket vibes in a big way. This style of song, the raw emotion. It's much less cut than most openings. Oh no, crying on the letter. Well chosen image. <laughs> very, very on point. It was simple, but really beautiful. That is very literal. I feel like that's putting a limit on her. It's gonna be exactly 200 a minute, isn't it? But she's not a robot. <laughs> she's a human being. <laughs> she has to be asked to eat. She has to be specially requested. You did not specify a chewing speed. She's got a great memory. It's a useful skill. It makes me very jealous. Well, this is all the sort of the technical parts of it. There's a hard to teach part of it as well. Right, right. This is the part she's going to excel at. But what about the emotional stuff? Well, school in the military, <laughs> there's a lot of overlap. But <laughs> fits right in. Oh, that was good. They look happy for her. Uh-oh. Bringing their home, home life into the office. I may have misunderstood. I felt like I did misunderstand something about that interaction with the that girl and Claudia. Maybe there was a translation thing that was going on with Netflix. Oh, I forgot. I'm not supposed to be watching Netflix. Uh, maybe instead she was just trying to make this guy jealous. Had something going on. This is where it gets sticky. Uh, this could be a huge opportunity. Speaking of reflecting your feelings and emotions through someone else. I was sort of hoping that she would go that direction. It's not the biggest elephant in the room. That would be the major. But while she's so focused on unraveling the meanings of, of love, it seems natural that part of her journey is realizing it in places that are already pretty close to her, with Claudia, her colleagues, who thankfully seem like they actually have a pretty good amount of regard for her. I mean, they're very patient. They seem to be rooting for her. Have I told you about the major? He's the best. The major is the new Armin. I wonder if everyone's playing a little bit safe here. 
This is sort of fun because you can try to read between the lines as they're saying it too. You know, honestly, I feel like being an auto memory doll seems fun. I think I would really enjoy this. It's so enticing listening to people talk about what matters to them because there's a lot of significance not in just what is said, but what is unsaid. The things that are the most meaningful are probably also the most terrifying. Seems like part of the job is reading between the lines and realizing what they really want to say, but are afraid to say out loud or are afraid to look at even themselves. From this girl, it seems like she's really worried about her brother, but is more comfortable addressing him vicariously through her parents. She obviously loves them and misses them a great deal. And is maybe worried for herself, you know, her own success, her own future. Not really knowing if this is the path for her, wondering if she's going to be able to give back in a significant way. This has me thinking about all the, the many things that are left unsaid. I feel like I have to call my parents all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's just getting there. Well, that's the job. The job is to abstract from the abstract. Yeah. And this is sort of hard to teach, too. It's such a great device, this whole thing, this whole job. Making it about learning how to be empathetic. Literally, the job is understanding the human heart. I mean, if she was already great at it, she wouldn't need to need school, would she? It's fine. Violet keeps meeting these really great, kind people. She's not going to push her off the, the, the watchtower, is she? I don't know why I just got that weird suspicion. She seems really lonely. I mean, both of them, I guess. Oh, that's, that's really bittersweet. That's really beautiful. Oof. Oh, she saw it, but there's got to be a profound sense of emptiness in experiencing that without him. I'm not even fully getting at it yet. It's sort of too rich to take it in a snapshot, but there's something really profound forming about the things and the events and the, the goals and then what they actually mean. It's very difficult to explain, but just a couple thoughts that come to mind. Thinking about the best times of my life, I can point to a lot of service level things. I can explain reasons why they were great and why I felt excited, but in almost all of them, maybe all of them, there were times where I felt really fulfilled in terms of who I was with and other people. And maybe that's particular to how I'm wired and, you know, the, the weight I have for what's important, but I don't think it's a coincidence. Thinking about my most recent trip to the Philippines, it was such an amazing trip. It was so full of adventure, like riding through the, the countryside of Cebu on a little scooter, taking an unplanned trip to this tiny little village and just by chance ending up in like a big town party of people who worked for the whale shark swimming facility that I planned to go the following morning and getting hooked up and stuff. And that was all great. You know, it was very exciting and adventurous and I felt free and alive. But if I really think about the heart of that, that trip, it's the fact that for a lot of it, my girlfriend was riding on the scooter behind me and kind of the feeling of these tiny snapshots and moments, even when there was something special going on, just the feeling that we were on the trip together in an alternate universe. I could have done all those things without her and it would have been very fun and exciting, but it wouldn't have that same heart. And here Violet made it to see this beautiful thing, but I don't know, it's tough, it hurts. Here's the brother that she was concerned about. Now that's what I call dinner. <laughs> Just stabbing at a tomato with a loaf of bread. This guy knows how to bachelor eat. That sucks. He just like ripped into the raw ingredients, ruining it for everyone. Yeah, I think I see where her, her real drama lies. Well, that was fast. I guess it was more of a seminar than university. Oh no. Right. There's also something really great about it where in order to become a good doll for others, you need to basically understand yourself. This is the letter that needs to get written. Yeah. This is why she's top of her class. She, she gets it. Wow. I feel like we're not quite ready yet. We're not quite there. It's too terrifying. Too big. I want to understand the meaning of love. I 
Like I said, I mean, she already knows what it means. It's just she's holding back a floodgate, it feels. There's something right in front of her that's going to be so powerful in both its beauty and its pain that she can't bring herself to take that step. If she didn't know what it was, you know, if she didn't have it there in some level, she wouldn't be like this. She wouldn't be going through all this. It's just kind of like locked in a certain chamber of her heart or mind. I thought so. She's responsible for the brother. You can start with stop eating my groceries before I cook. Crying tears of alcohol. Speaking of not being able to deal with emotions. お父さんとお母さんが死んだのは自分のせいだと思い込んでる。生きててくれるだけで嬉しいの。ありがとうって。伝えたいだけなのに。うん。Well, that's gonna get through the violence at some level, right? Definitely understand why she was afraid to write that letter. I sympathize with the Kulia because she's dealing with the same loss that her brother dealt with and she probably just never played that role you know she never played the role of caretaker for her brother it can get really tricky there's like this this trap where the dynamic that people need or what people need to hear is in conflict with some other thing that they're relying on what he needs is a combination of honesty probably with understanding and compassion about his feelings you know his feelings of helplessness his feelings of guilt which are all perfectly understandable things if somewhat inaccurate i mean it's not his fault that the war happened he's not responsible for his parents death clearly though i understand very intuitively why he would feel that way but just you know guessing based on typical dynamics that might initially feel like an admission of weakness and it's really difficult to approach people who have that sort of that guarded layer where they want to project the image that they're always capable he probably feels like it's his responsibility to take care of his sister so there would be an extra layer of guilt to pass through just to have the conversation about the actual guilt and i can imagine someone like kulia not wanting to be the one that's a pretty deep hole when you're in bad shape and you're doing things that are not great but you can't even get there because it hurts more to realize how deeply that's failing other people in ways you care more about than even that but you stay there long enough that's just digging the hole deeper and deeper i think the only way is just to kind of clear house and just take the hit once it can turn around more quickly than people give it credit for you know it just takes the decision and then a little bit of time just the momentum just the upward tra trajectory is satisfying and the farther you get along that the more you can put the other stuff behind you and actually feel feel solid feel decent but it's a long climb and it's not Lucilia's responsibility her responsibility is probably just honesty and compassion but then also her feelings of guilt and failure are wrapped up in this too <laughs> Yeah, here we go. Did I get through? It's just too big. There's just too much going on at once. It's like her stuff, it's his stuff. It's the pain of loss. It's the confusion of roles. I think Violet has enough to work with. I mean, I think she should just write it. I mean, she really loves her brother. She really cares about him, but just doesn't know how to help. Either way she goes, it's dangerous. The guilt of failure just abounds. There's a resounding theme of sort of helplessness. <laughs> Maybe we don't even need to write a letter. Oh, but we did that too. <laughs> it's just four words. Get your crap together. <laughs> well, it is pretty short. I guess that's said enough. He already knows too. Well done, Violet. Simple but amazing. Despite her brother openly weeping on the letter. <laughs> Did it work? Who knows? Speaking of needing to express your true feelings, having them buried. ルクリアからお兄さんへの手紙をあなたが届けてくれたのよ。ten <laughs> points for Gryffindor. <laughs> 
Good on the teacher for recognizing it and rewarding it. Attendance policies be damned. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> Speaking of mirrors and projecting, I feel like Lukulia is the great one. Lukulia just got herself back, reflected back at her. This is the ending. What a day this is. I think I, I predicted the the ending during the opening. It's the poignant walk through the weather, through the seasons. The typewriter and its keys and symbols is, a, is such a great motif. So codifying things that are hard to codify. I feel like there are going to be some very significant letters coming up as the show progresses and concludes. This show is so short, it's the beginning, but I already feel like it's coming to an end. And it seems like that's how it's going to be. It's going to be a bunch of them, a bunch of the characters one by one, being able to finally confront the things that they already know, they're already there, but just don't know how to process yet, or too afraid to process, that they they need to process. With Violet Evergarden probably being the, the biggest one and maybe the final one. Well, that was a real tearjerker. Just got a big storm coming. I mean, it's already all there. It's already brewing raging. It's so weird, it's so interesting how we can know something while simultaneously hiding it from ourselves. It's such a complex ecosystem, the heart and mind. You know, I think I spent so much time and energy trying to manipulate my, my version of things, my version of events and situations in order to ward off some sort of pain, you know, thinking that the truth is too painful to look at or to accept in its full fullness. And sometimes that's a result of certain assumptions, you know, certain underlying assumptions where well, if this were true, then this would also certainly be true. And that result, that outcome is too devastating to fully entertain. And there's just a whole bunch of problems with that. I mean, for one, a lot of times those conclusions are just overstated in their either significance to our lives or even in their reality. You know, we can't, or are not very good at accurately extrapolating out into time. You know, for example, let's say with a romantic relationship, it can be hard to look at issues or it can be hard to accept that things are over because there's this thing that's been taken for granted at some point that this is the best it'll ever be, or this is the only the only person that exists in this capacity or perhaps that if it's over if the relationship's over or has changed significantly that means it was all for nothing you know missing the significance of, of what it brought the things we learned it could bring up thoughts or feelings of failure as a person and seeing that as bigger than it really is you know seeing it as more than just a few discrete failures and rather seeing it as something that is endemic to personality to one's very being there's a whole bunch of ways in which it gets blown up to a level of non-reality whereas if i try to look at it objectively and in terms of my experience in almost all cases the the fighting of that battle you know trying to ward off pain of reality is actually more painful and more taxing in its upkeep whereas yeah you know the acceptance of what is actually going on trying to look at things in a really raw state for what they are feeling the full emotional weight of things that happen and you know accepting disappointment and accepting the ways in which i feel i haven't done great you know i've done things wrong is brutal you know it's not easy but it's a different kind of pain you know it's like breaking a leg versus like this chronic kind of stress that perhaps ends up doing a lot greater damage long term as it's practiced it just silently subtly eats at you day after day and you don't even realize how insidious that is until you've kind of cleared that you know let that emotional train of heartbreak hit you find your feet address the underlying thing that's going on that's probably linked to something that you, know, you have to look at or do and then continue on from there in a way that is kind of more aligned with honesty and integrity i wonder if there's like a systematic approach to this kind of thing if i had to guess i would say one approach maybe is just questioning certain assumptions there's this weird programming that we develop where it's like if a then b if b then c if this fails that means it's solely because of me and if that's true then it means i'm just a terrible person or whatever the case may be you know something along those lines where each step of those assumptions there's something not full about it there's something wrong about it things are just what they are taking lukulia and her brother i think what makes their their relationship compelling and the outcome satisfying is partly that they're both kind of doing the same thing in a sense they're both perhaps taking responsibility for things that are not not really their responsibility and if they knew what the other was thinking if they knew how much the other meant to them it might have cleared a lot of that out a lot faster both of them in a way are carrying the same baggage that neither of them need carry or they could at least carry together and they're probably both making faulty assumptions about the other and about their own responsibility in each other's lives and as soon as those walls come down and that gets connected it's immediately satisfying and it feels rich 
And it feels true, it feels right. They still have a lot of the same pain, but it's like the true pain, if that makes sense. It's just the pain of loss and the benefit is they can actually carry it together. There's always gonna be something really beautiful and satisfying about that kind of catharsis, you know, that kind of letting go of all the things, all the lies and illusions trying to protect one from pain in order to get to what is actually the pain, which is just pain, you know, it's just, that's all it is. It's just some kind of truth that needs to be looked at. And I think if that's really what it is, if it really is just the truth of pain, it's qualitatively different. It's not the toxic kind that you carry with you forever. It's the kind that you just feel. And if it's really gotten to at its source, then it can be a freeing experience. You can make an analogy even with the human body. You know, let's say you have a, a, a leg injury. If you don't treat the injury at its source, your whole body ends up compensating to the point where you start to get other chronic injuries as well as a result of that repeated stress. There's something similar with emotions, you know, it's like if you get to the, the actual cause, if you can be brave enough to face what is actually the issue and look at it from a place of trying to get to the actual truth without constructing these weird layers and walls where this is something endemic to my personality or I'm responsible for the whole world and everything that went wrong. Nobody will ever forgive me for my mistakes because X, Y, Z, I never deserve to have this resolved. I never deserve any kind of reconciliation. That ends up getting carried and it changes your underlying assumptions for who you are and therefore changes your actions and therefore changes what you encounter in the world and how people treat you and what you're willing to go for and the risks you're willing to take, etc. There's just so much loss in there. There's just so much waste. It's worth the pain. You know, it's worth trying to accept it as best as possible, even though it's really tricky when, you know, the mind does such a good job trying to evade it.